So last offseason, the Denver Broncos and Seattle Seahawks made a huge trade, and it definitely shook up the NFL. At least we thought it did. Now, the Denver Broncos gave up Noah Fant, Shelby Harris, Drew Locke, two firsts, two seconds, and a fifth to acquire future Hall of Fame quarterback Russell Wilson. And at the time, it made a lot of sense for both teams because, hey, Seattle has not really done much the past few years in the playoffs. They have definitely been declining since their peak years with the Legion of Boom. And with Russell creeping towards his mid-30s, it did make sense to get rid of him at that point. Now, Russ did spend 10 years in Seattle and, as I said, put up a Hall of Fame resume. They made the playoffs eight times, had two Super Bowl appearances, and did win a Super Bowl back in 2013. But Seattle did seem to be in full-on rebuild mode, and it made sense for them. Coming off a 7-10 season, you had Pete Carroll very much up there in age, it made sense now for this team to actually rebuild. And after this trade happened, of course, the Broncos did rightfully get some Super Bowl hype, and people thought this might be the trade that put the Broncos over the top, because... The Broncos the past, I don't know, four or five years since Peyton Manning left even more, they have always had a problem of getting over the hump because they did not have a quarterback. But now you trade for 33-year-old Russell Wilson in his prime still, and you're thinking, well, that's the missing piece that the Denver Broncos need. But unfortunately, that's pretty much not how it went at all. Russell Wilson went 4-11 last year as a starter, had 16 passing touchdowns, 11 interceptions, 60 completion percentage, the lowest of his career, and was sacked a season high and career high 55 times. Now, Wilson did get injured a few times last year. He had a shoulder injury, a hamstring issue, and a concussion late in the season. But aside from that, there are other factors as to why he had such a terrible year. There was the head coaching hire of Nathaniel Hackett coming over from the Green Bay Packers as a former quarterback coach, and it did not work out at all. He was not ready to be a head coach, and honestly, you can see that from their week one game against the Seattle Seahawks. There were injuries to the offensive line, including his left tackle Garrett Bowles, who was supposed to hold down the offensive line. He got injured in early October, and honestly, Russell Wilson just looked broken sometimes. Something was definitely off about him, and I do believe he was not fully healthy last year. I think it's fair to admit that. But now with Denver high hiring Sean Payton as their head coach, we wonder, can Russell Wilson turn this thing around or is this just who Russell Wilson is now? Now, me personally, I think Russell Wilson can get back to what he was. I mean, Sean Payton, I think, was the perfect coach to bring in here to Denver. I definitely give them a lot of credit for that hire although it did cost a ton of money and a first round pick to do so. But Sean Payton, aside from a few down years from 2014 to 2016, he was a phenomenal coach with the New Orleans Saints. It did result in only one Super Bowl. They probably should have won at least two, but that guy has proven that he is a great NFL coach. And of course, he turned around Drew Brees' entire career. If you look at the stature of a guy like Drew Brees and a guy like Russell Wilson, they are pretty similar, like height wise and the way they play now. Russell Wilson used to be more of a scrambling quarterback when he needed to, but Russell Wilson, as I said, is now 34, so he's not going to be running the ball as much as he once did and probably wants to be more of a pocket passer at this point in his career. So if Russell Wilson can kind of emulate what Drew Brees did in his time in New Orleans, I know it's not going to be the same exact thing, but if he can be something near that in the same type of offense, then why can't Russell Wilson bounce back? Now, if this does continue to go south for the Broncos, which of course it could, anything's possible, this may end up being one of the most lopsided trades in NFL history. Seattle just a couple years ago made a very bad trade, trading two first round picks and a safety for Jamal Adams, who, let's be honest, has not been worth even one first round pick so far. They tried to go all in with that move and it definitely backfired. And now Seattle has reached a point where they were playing with house money last year and they still made it to the playoffs with the resurrection of Geno Smith's career. Geno did win Comeback Player of the Year. What did he come back from? I'm not sure, but Geno definitely deserves credit for how he played last season because he did ultimately play like a top 10 or even 12 quarterback in the NFL last season. And looking at the Seahawks draft class last year, if you look at guys like Charles Cross and Boye Mafe and Kenneth Walker, Abraham Lucas, Kobe Bryant, you had, of course, Tariq Woolen at corner, who was one of the best rookies in the entire league last year. This so far looks like an amazing draft class in what was supposed to be the first year of a rebuild. And the best part about that for Seattle and why I said they were playing with house money was because they own the first round pick of Denver. And Denver was a terrible team last year, finishing 5-12. and 12. So because of that, Seattle now has the fifth overall pick in the draft in a year where they finished 9-8 and eight as a team, which is just amazing. It's kind of like the Eagles in a way, how they made it to the Super Bowl and still have a top 10 pick because of that 
trade they made with New Orleans last year trading picks. So if Russell Wilson does not turn things around and ends up being a complete bust, then yeah, this might be one of the most lopsided trades in NFL history, especially if the Broncos once again have a very high pick and Seattle picks the right guys in the first round. And on that note, the Broncos better hope this works out for Russell Wilson because they realistically cannot get out of his contract until 2026. So you're stuck with this guy for a bit. If they were to hypothetically release him this offseason, which of course would not happen, they would have to take $107 million in dead cap, and his cap hit is $22 million. I mean, it's probably one of the worst contracts in football if Russell Wilson doesn't bounce back. Now, having Russ at a $22 million cap hit next year, it gives the Broncos some room to maneuver and sign some guys, but going forward, he will start making more money. The year after, he's on a $35 million cap hit, the year after, a $55 million cap hit, then a $58 million cap hit in 2026. And that's the concerning part about going all in for one player. Russell Wilson did seem like he was foolproof and there was no way that it was going to go this way, but unfortunately, it did in year one. In Seattle, for literally 10 years, a full decade, Russell Wilson was very consistent should have been in the MVP conversation every year. And as I said, he made the playoffs eight times in 10 years. That's pretty damn good. I went back last week and watched some of Russell Wilson's gameplay. And sure, he may have declined a tiny bit, but I still think he's a pretty good quarterback. So to wrap this up, I do think Russ bounces back next year and probably has around 4,000 passing yards and 30 touchdowns. And the Broncos should at least be an eight win team next year. Now, of course, you would hope for more if you're Denver because you're kind of playing to win now. There's no waiting game there's no playing for the future when you have Russell Wilson and Sean Payton together and we do love to rave about how great the Broncos roster is and it is really good but losing guys in recent years like Von Miller and even guys like Noah Fant in the trade and even Shelby Harris in the trade that went to Seattle those were very useful starters there for the Broncos at one time it is going to be harder to really rebuild if you're Denver because you don't have your own first or second round pick the next couple years so they're gonna have draft picks but they're not gonna be the highest draft picks but they do have some cap space as i mentioned because russell wilson's cap hit was only 22 million dollars for next year so what do you guys think do you think russell wilson turns it around next year with sean payton in town or will this go down as one of the worst trades in nfl history as i said i think russ bounces back but this still has a chance to go down as a very bad trade regardless because seattle did get a massive haul for russell wilson but if you're denver it's tough to blame them i mean you went from peyton manning who was playing a hall of fame level of football had 55 passes touchdowns back in 2013 for them to going to guys like Paxton Lynch and Case Keenum and Joe Flacco and Trevor Simeon and Drew Locke and it was just not working out so I don't mind them taking a big swing at a potential Hall of Fame quarterback when he was available to get but we'll see how it works out and I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll talk to you guys next time